Are you trying random words and hoping for the best results? Yeah, I did that too until I understood the concepts I'm about to share with you in this video. In episode 1, we covered how to structure a text prompt to achieve the best results possible. Video link is in the description if you have not watched that episode yet. In this episode, episode 2, we'll understand how the words you use actually impact your image results. Understanding these concepts will allow you to better use your words to achieve the end results you want. So stick around until the end as this video will be packed with tips on how you can control your character designs and by the end you should feel a lot more comfortable putting text prompts together and being able to predict the results you receive from Midjourney. Or in other words, you'll understand how Midjourney thinks. We're going to be creating a male character in the style of Studio Ghibli. For those of you who don't know, Studio Ghibli is a Japanese animation film studio. It was founded in 1985 and has become famous for their films Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle and Ponyo. It has also become a very popular style with Midjourney users as it produces beautiful results, both character designs and landscapes similar to the ones displayed on your screen. Now in Discord, let's begin our character design. I've written out our prompt, and again that follows the structure of style, in this case Studio Ghibli, main idea which is character design portrait, cute and happy male, and followed by the details, ambient city background. I'll be running this prompt in the test version of Midjourney, and I'll be doing an aspect ratio of 2 by 3. Aspect ratio is actually a very important parameter for the image result you receive. Depending on what you are creating, vertical and horizontal aspect ratios will likely give you significantly different results, where one will give you much better compositions and details than the other. So experiment and see what works best for your image. If you're struggling to obtain decent results in horizontal aspect ratio, try vertical and vice versa. Since we are creating a portrait here, I've chosen vertical aspect ratio as that in my opinion produces much cleaner, well composed results overall for portraits. Running the prompt, these are our results. It seems we have not done a great job with our text prompt as we are receiving generic Studio Ghibli style environments and shots that do not really focus on a character design. This is because we have not explained our idea to Midjourney well enough for it to understand the importance of our character. The lack of character detail provided has forced Midjourney to produce generic Studio Ghibli style images, as we can see from this image database which Midjourney uses for referencing. I'll post the link down in the description, but this is an amazing resource to search up your potential styles and phrases and see how Midjourney understands the references you are feeding it. In our case, due to the lack of character details that we have provided, Midjourney seems to have defaulted to this look that we see on our screen, which has a lot of sky and environment and very little character. To fix this, we simply need to provide more character details. By adding more character-centric descriptions, we'll force Midjourney to focus more on character creation. Let's say we want to create an older gentleman. I'm going to go ahead and add old male, um, let's say that he has white hair and I want him to have reading glasses as well. That's better, we now have our main image focus on a character in the Studio Ghibli style but we have another issue. The character is now reading a book and this is not what I'm going for here. But this is actually an amazing example of how one word can change your entire results. Remember we added reading, glasses? The word reading by itself caused these results where we see a book. So be careful what words you use. Always try to be as concise and as accurate as possible in your text prompts. Obviously the fix here is quite simple. I substituted reading glasses with only glasses and that provided us with these results which are much better. So let's now evolve our image quality further. To improve the quality of our image, we're going to add Unreal Engine. You might have seen a lot of text prompts with Unreal Engine in them, but what is it and what does it do? Well, Unreal Engine is a 3D computer graphics game engine which is used for development of 3D games. 
So adding this to your text prompt will give us a much more polished, detailed and 3D look to our image. Look at the difference between the image on the left from our previous prompt without Unreal Engine and the image on the right after we added it. The image on the right feels much more polished and 3D, so if you're going for a more realistic style, then Unreal Engine is a very effective way to achieve that. This is the second result with Unreal Engine in our text prompt. I'm now very satisfied with the character quality we are receiving, but the background is plain, where I requested an ambient city background. Oh, before I forget, make sure you don't make any spelling mistakes as I misspelled engine and the results weren't pretty. Right, let's fix our background now. The fix here is quite simple. Recalling from our previous episode on prompt crafting, the earlier a word appears in a prompt, the more importance Midjourney places on it. So I'll move our ambient city background phrase away from the back where we list our details and I'm going to move it all the way up front where we list our style. And I guess that makes sense uh, for it to be a part of style as we are describing the background style that we are going for. And that's perfect. We now have our 3D character in the city setting that we wanted. You can see we have a very realistic render on the right and a little more cartoonish render to the left. Both are very nice and clean compositions and I'm happy with these results. A very important concept I want to convey to you is that when making changes to your text prompt, there is no guarantee that you receive the composition that you want. However, the better you understand how Midjourney works, the better probability you have of receiving the results that you want. In my opinion, you should think of it in terms of probability. Before I moved the ambient city background to the front, I was receiving a city background once every maybe 10 images. After I moved it to the front, I was receiving beautiful city backgrounds maybe every 8 out of 10 images. You need to keep on re-rolling and see if the changes you've made to your text prompt deliver consistently better results. Before the final tip, consider subscribing if you've enjoyed this video. Finally, it's worth mentioning that if I rerun the exact same prompt with the style of Pixar, for example, the character now looks to be of Western descent rather than Asian descent as before. This is likely because Pixar is a Western animation studio and thus the references Midjourney receives when looking up Pixar are Western characters, compared to more Asian characters when looking up Studio Ghibli. So again, think about the meaning behind your words. It's very important. Interestingly, is it a coincidence that our character looks a lot like the founder of Studio Ghibli, Hayao Miyazaki? Words can carry a lot of meaning. Think about it and thank you for watching.